Is daily life in Iraq today what you hoped it would be 10 years ago? No, um, because for some people, at least in Iraq, it's immensely difficult, particularly if you're living in Baghdad and around the center of the country. Uh, there are still terrorist activities that are killing people, killing innocent people for no good reason. But the country as a whole, obviously, its economy is growing very strongly. It's got huge amounts of oil revenue. But no, there are still big problems. At a conservative estimate, uh, since 2003, 100,000 civilians have been killed. Uh, 179 British soldiers died. Don't you think that was too high a price? Of course the price is very, very high. Is it too but, high? But, well, think of the price that people paid before Saddam was removed. Think of, think of the Iran-Iraq war in which there were a million casualties, hundreds of thousands of young conscript Iranians who were killed, many of them by the use of chemical weapons. Chemical weapons attacks on his own people, the Kurds. People oppressed, deprived of their rights, tortured and killed on a daily basis, but year on year on year. killings now. Exactly. So what is the answer? That's what I'm saying to you. The well, answer is not to say to people, I'm afraid we should have left Saddam in charge because otherwise these sectarians will come in and try and destabilize the country. The answer is you get rid of the oppressive dictatorship and then you have a long, hard struggle to push these sectarian elements out too. And that, look, Iraq but getting potentially... Rid of the, but getting rid of the oppressive dictatorship was not why you went in. You only went in for one single reason. Of course. And, and that, uh, the reason that we regarded Saddam as a threat has been set out for many, many, you know, many, many reports and many, many times. And we've gone over this a huge amount. But if you're asking me, which you were, about the state of Iraq today, there are actually significant improvements in many parts of the country for the people. But I agree with you. It's not nearly what it should be. And the reason for that is not because the will of the Iraqis isn't that they have that prosperity and democracy. The reason is because people have deliberately tried to destabilize the country. And this is, this is the problem you've got all over the region. You wrote in your memoirs that you think of those who died in Iraq every day of your life. What do you think about? Well, of course, you think about them and the loss of life and the, and the terrible consequences for the families. But in the end, you're elected as a prime minister to take these decisions. And the question is, supposing I've taken the opposite decision. I mean, sometimes what happens in politics, and unfortunately these things get mixed up with allegations of you know, deceit and lying and so on, but in the end, sometimes you come to a decision where whichever choice you take, the consequences are difficult and the choice is ugly. This was one such case. If we hadn't removed Saddam from power. Just think, for example, what would be happening if these Arab revolutions were continuing now. And Saddam, who's probably 20 times as bad as Assad in Syria, was trying to suppress an uprising in Iraq. I mean, think of the consequences of leaving that regime in power. So when you say, do you think of the, the loss of life and the trouble there's been since 2003? Of course I do, and, and you'd have to be inhumane not to. But think of what would have happened if he'd been left there. Ten years on, uh, people, some people call you a liar, some people call you a war criminal, protesters follow you. It's difficult for you to walk down the streets of a country where you once had a landslide victory. Do you think Iraq has taken its toll on you? Look, it really doesn't matter whether it's taken its toll but on it me, does. but the, the, the fact is, yes, there are people who uh, will be very abusive. By the way, I do walk down the street, and by the way, I won an election in 2005 after Iraq. However, yes, it remains extremely divisive and very difficult. My point is to people is, is this. I've long since given up and trying to persuade people it was the right decision. In a sense, what I try to persuade people of now is understand how complex and, and difficult a decision it was. Because I think if we don't understand that, we won't take the right decision about what I think will be a series of these types of problems that will arise now over the next few years. You've got one in Syria right now, you've got one in Iran to come. The issue is how do you make the world a safer place? And really Would what you say I'm saying is... Would you say it was today rather than 2003? Would you um, really say that? No, I wouldn't Nobody say that. Nobody would say that. No, I wouldn't say that. But what I would say is it is safer as a result of having, in my view, as a, as a result of having got rid of Saddam. Just in other words, I think we're in the middle of this struggle. It's going to take a generation. It's going to be very arduous and difficult, but I think we are um, making a mistake, I think a, a profound error, if we think we can stay out of that struggle, because we are 
are going to be affected by it whether we like it or not.